Hmm. Have I been in there yet? I probably have. Okay, sorry, sorry to bore you guys. In case I have. I think I have. I have bad memory. I'm just gonna do it again anyway. No. Alright, the other one I guess was over here. Wait, hang on. Sorry, I'm being quiet. I'm just thinking. <clears throat> hmm. Another recommendation I guess I can make. Oh, yes, yummy gems. This hand carved boomerang is very old and painted with fancy designs. It's one of the Kangaroo Museum artifacts we need to find for Sheila. I'm just not phased by all this junk they're looking at. Um, anyway. And yes, by anyway, I mean. I guess that brings me on to another point. Whenever I trans, whenever I transition from, you know, or segue from one conversation to another, of course I say anyway. I say the word anyway, which is a catchphrase. And when you think about it, a lot of daily things we say are catchphrases, <clears throat> like "shut up" and "that doesn't make sense," or "what the fuck," or. Um, lol, and trying to replace like catchphrases with something else just results in you having another catchphrase to say. And I guess it's unavoid unavoidable for humans to have catchphrases. You know, that's something I say a lot, which is hilarious when you think about it. But the, but when you think about it more, it you come to realize it's a very human thing to do. It allows us to transition seamlessly from one thing to the other, I guess, or have a a social expectation response, I don't know what to call it. You end up saying the same words over and over again anyway. <laughs> After all, that's what language is. Borrowing words. Oh, I like, I like that word. Mollify. That's a nice word. I'm glad I met this person so I could learn this word. I'm going to adopt it into my vocabulary now. And that's just the way things work. Some things catch on. Phrases like, I still love you, star baby. That's not, that's not one I've heard for a long time. To be honest. Or, um... Let me think. Or memes, even, I guess. Top cack! And... Uh, what else? Oh my god. Oh yeah. Uh, whatever memes. I, I, I don't know why I can't think of any. Tra -la 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 -la. That's an old one. Winning. That's a really fucking old one. But they make their way into people's vocabulary, so in some sense they kind of evolve because they just replace other buzzwords that people say. Which gives you a huge insight into people's culture. And that's not something you can really translate with, you know, Google Translate or whatever. Like. The word like, that's a huge fucking example. Why is that a fucking catchphrase word? You know? <laughs> oh my god. That, oh my god, is another one. Jeez. Jeez is another one. <laughs> oh my god. You, I'm, I've just driven probably half of my audience crazy. It's going to be very hard talking from now on without being like, but that's a catchphrase, and that's a catchphrase too. Oh, wait, no, hang on. Oh, L and select, R select. L R select. No, wait, no, how do I open up the journal again? Oh. Star and select. I'll get this, guys. L and start. There we go! 620 out of 800. Don't have everything yet, don't have all the chests. You know, don't have all the keys. I'm missing one key half, I think. Let me just check. Dun. Yes, and I don't remember where it is. Oh, this is driving me crazy. Just like last episode, it could be in a world I've already been in like a hundred times, and I wouldn't fucking know. Hmm, but I made some decent progress. But I'm not ready to stop yet. I don't know, it has been a while. 
Anyway, that little talk about catchphrases was kind of a distraction from what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about is another video game recommendation. Holy shit. <sighs> Where to begin with this one? And by the way, um, before I begin talking about it, <laughs> by the way is another fucking catchphrase, let's just take a moment to absorb the situation that we are in the game right now. So I've just entered this portal. I might have done so in a previous episode, I don't remember. But here we are, in this new world. This world is quite crazy, as you can tell. It's designed to be one of the last two worlds in the game. And it really messes with reality and expectations. The enemies are hard, obviously. Everything's floating in our space. Just listen to Spyro as he falls to his death. <laughs> Amazing. But it's very atmospheric, too. I mean, this is a destroyed statue, so I guess I've already been here? Or is that like a premonition of the thing in the next area? Have I been here? I probably just did this first bit. Yeah, because there are no gems or chests over here. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. This game recommendation. Are you ready? It's for PC. It's for PS4. I think it's also for Xbox One. And... Wow. Just wow. I never bought a game so fast before. I don't think. I might have. Okay, I guess I've been here a little bit. Jeez. It's called Near Automata. A lot of you guys may be hearing about this more and more often lately. It's a game that I believe is going to begin trending soon as a top 10 best sellers or recommendations. Because as far as I'm aware, it currently isn't, but it's selling well enough to be trending very soon. I first found out about this game from a an unlikely source, let's just say that. I was like, this looks pretty cool. Let's just say I saw a parody of the game. And I didn't know what the hell it was, but I watched the parody anyway. I think I watched it on Newgrounds or Tumblr or something. And it's pretty cool. And I didn't think too much of it. But then I started seeing more and more pictures of it on other parts of the internet. And I was thinking, okay, wh what is this? Is this an anime? Is this a game? Because at the point, I didn't know what it was. Have I already been here? You see my brother in, in that room? His poor parent kids are gonna flip. There's this Rhinox in there. Are you sure you've got the right address? Sure, I'm sure. This is a red bit habitat, ain't it? I've definitely been here before. This was one of the earlier episodes. I did that stupid mole whacking game. It's like, you'll never stop it. Oh no, Ripto, oh, stop touching me there. Yes, I shall. <laughs> Also, they set your heart into my butt. <laughs> While I was complaining about something. I take over the world, wahaha, because I'm evil and shit. And you know it. No, Ripto, stop it. You're destroying the world's hearts. Uh, don't touch them there, they might break. So, where do I go from here? I guess I could look for some more chests. Or how to get that goggles power up. Now, that's very important. Not today. No! No, 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 no. God damn it, dude. Right, any ship around? Ship? This ship? Yep. Hmm, just a ship. Oh, whoops, don't need to do that. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> you ain't getting. You ain't getting back to life. Oh, no, never mind. I guess you can just teleport. <coughs> okay, so let's go for a bit more of the backstory, because I've been telling people about this. I guess my close friends, anyway. About this game. Uh, <laughs> there are no chests I can open. This game is amazing. Sorry, I'm not explaining anything. Um, let me go back to where I was. I wasn't sure if it was a game or an anime, so I did a bit of research and I found out it was a video game. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And didn't think anything of it. But then I started seeing more and more of it. And I think I decided to search up on YouTube, and then I found a video of a girl. Oh yeah, I've been it before. A girl explaining 
the backstory that you might not necessarily know about if you're playing Neo Automata. I was like, wait, what? Neo Automata is actually a sequel to a game called Nier. And Nier came in two parts. Nier Gestalt and Nier Replicant. And um, I was like, oh, this is interesting. I'll, I'll watch more. So I watched this video, which is like 24 minutes long, and I was really sucked in. It was basically the backstory of this game, which I knew nothing about. About, you know, parallel universes and... Um, <clears throat> what else was it? Parallel universes. And it's also part of a series called Drakengard, which was a video game series for the PS2. Drakengard 1, Drakengard 3, Near Gestalt, Near Replicant, and Near Automata were all made by a guy called Yoko Taro, who also does little things extra for the series. You know, little bridges bridging the gaps in between the games with drama CDs, I think it's manga, and theatre theater plays, screenplays or something. So it's quite a huge series, and the timeline is not a straight line, it's branching timelines, multiple storylines, and crazy stuff, and time travelling androids from the future, and giant aliens from, another di from one dimension crossing into another dimension, causing some plague that wipes out humanity, and the entire series is full of despair and tragedy. I guess both are hand in hand. And this is what got me more interested. To the point where I accidentally ended up spoiling a lot of this game. The next... Um, I think it was the next step after this video, or it might have been the step before discovering this video talking about the backstory. Um, Whichever, I forget which order I did this in, I decided to look up Jim Sterling, the video game critic, because he covers all kinds of video games. So I, I typed in Nero Tomata, I typed in Jim Sterling, and I saw his Jim Pre uh, two of his Jim Pression videos on the game. And it looked interesting from what he was playing in the demo. I was like, that looks interesting enough to want to give a go, I suppose. Um, and, uh, but I, I still wasn't fully, you know, invested in this point. So after seeing that girl's videos, oh, sorry, video explaining the backstory, I looked at her comment section, found, you know, lots of interesting perspectives on game series or whatever, and then I found some saying, oh, you're just like this other YouTuber, Clumps or Clemps or whatever his name is. I was like, okay. Who is this guy? Wait, is there, am I supposed to be using these hats for anything? No, I guess not. Is there anything in these hats? Hmm, I guess not. Can I push these up the stairs? Oh, I can! That makes sense. Okay, I guess first I'm going over here. Um, but after watching Clemp's videos, he went into a lot more detail than the girl did, but he missed out some important points that the girl had mentioned. So watching both of them together, I got a quite solid backstory, and I was very interested at this point, to the point where I got excited for Nier Automata. So, I don't have a PS4, and my PC isn't strong, uh, powerful enough to play the game. I don't have an Xbox One either, so I decided to go on my sister's PS4 itself, because my sister has one. I don't live with my parents. I got, got on my sister's PS4, and I downloaded the demo, and I was struggling so much. And then I saw... Well, I, I couldn't get through it, and then I had to go home because my parents were going to bed or something. And then I saw Etika Network playing the demo, and his gameplay style is kind of what... I looked to as a baseline of inspiration because I'm very unfamiliar with the hack and slash genre. I've played The Incredibles on PS2. I've played Kingdom Hearts. Oh my god, Spyro. I played Kingdom Hearts 1. I didn't really like it. I played Kingdom Hearts 2. I loved it. Go down. I gotta go back up here now. Um, so I'm somewhat familiar. Oh, I see. I see where the other button is now. I gotta grab these hats. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, whatever hack and slash games I played. 
played a bit of Hyrule Legends. Yeah, I say a bit. I'm sorry, I have sinned. I have not fully played that game, like I'm sure a lot of people have. I played maybe an hour of it, and I haven't returned to it, not because I don't like it, but because I I've just been occupied playing other games that I enjoy. Not like I don't enjoy it, it's just... I don't understand the hack and slash genre. It's a bit of a... It puts me off a little bit. Not because it's bad, just because I'm not used to it and I'm a bit intimidated. I don't know as many things as other people. So, playing this demo, I died a bunch. Then I got to play it again, and I finally beat it. I beat the demo. With, you know, some of Etika's gameplay... playstyles in mind, or whatever you want to call it. I, I adopted some of his playstyle, and I used that as a base to continue from there on. Wow, all this lag. <laughs> you ain't getting away from me, bitch. <coughs> and um, then I got some extra money, let's just say that. I didn't steal... No, no, I was... Uh, no, no, someone was looking after some money for me, and they gave, you know, I asked them for it back. They're like, yeah, sure, here you go. So I used some of that money to buy this game for 45 quid. Which is not bad, actually. I mean... If I wanted the limited edition with a steel case, it would have been £10 extra. I think there was a pre-order one, which I don't know what the price of that was, but it came with a t-shirt, a figurine, uh, an art book, music CD, um, and a box to put everything in. Oh, and DLC for extra pod skins, and to have Grimoire Weiss, Grimoire Weiss, whatever his name is, from the first near game as a as a pod, which is kind of weird, since the two games are set like five thousand years apart. I haven't actually gotten to explaining near Automata yet, have I? That's because I need to I need to hype you guys up, explain explain my interest so that you understand where I'm coming from. If I just say play this game, it's hack and slash game. It's a Japanese style game. Check out the demo. You guys are gonna be like, uh, so what? But I, I kind of want to hype this up. Hang on a moment. First you mentioned you here, Spyro. I've got a real gem for you this time. At a painfully low price. Well, 1,600 gems anyway. Pay him the money. Oh man, I really don't want to... I'm kind of saving up for a console. I want to get a PlayStation 4. 3,514 gems just isn't enough. You need like 70... Uh, 7,000 gems. Oh man, it's kind of really good to him. I don't know, man. He looks like he needs them, though. He looks like he really needs them. Look at him. Look at the poor fat bastard. He's so fat, he needs the money for surgery, I bet. Okay, fine. I suppose you're always such a good customer, huh? You laughing at me? Ooh, the magic dust in this bag makes gold instead of purple, Spyro. You can use it from the bonus items page in the journal. Hmm. I like being that light sort of blue color the most. But maybe I'm just being awkward since that's the gem that's got the most value. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm being awkward. 